So one of my friends sent me this comic and this doctor made a comic and she says it's based on her observation that many unmarried male patients will tolerate just about anything until it starts affecting their pain. So the name of this game show on this comic is it's time for what brings him in. She says in which we guess what symptom brings this male patient to the hospital. Our contestant today is Dave. Dave is an unmarried 57-year-old gentleman who loves football and working on his bike. Unfortunately, Dave has undiagnosed heart failure. That's a serious condition and has the same five-year mortality as lung cancer. So that's the start of the comment. She says, for the first symptom, lower extremity edema. With this symptom, fluid accumulates in your legs, making them heavy, unable to fit in your shoes and causing cracking, bleeding and sores in your skin. So Dave, the people want to know, are you coming in? And Dave says, nah, I'll just put a little Neosporin on and wear sandals. Okay, she says, let's move on to symptom number two. Your lungs fill up with fluid, which leads to shortness of breath and inability to lay flat and very upsetting tendency to wake up in the middle of the night struggling to breathe. Now, Dave, the people want to know, are you coming in? Um, she says, I'm sorry, he says, this one's easy. I can just sleep in my recliner and breathing is overrated anyway. She responds with breathing is overrated. And then she says, all right, that brings us to, all right, symptom number three. Um, remember the leg swelling from symptom number one? Well, it's progressed, gone all the way up your thighs until it makes your way to your scrotum. This causes significant discomfort as well as ED. He's like, oh God, buzz, buzz, buzz. All right, looks like, um, all right, folks, it looks like Dave has chosen to buzz, buzz, buzz. It's okay, Dave, you only have to hit the buzzer once. What are you going to do to help me? Okay, so this is the comic. Remember, this is an unmarried man. She is basically saying it takes this to make them come into the doctor. Okay, so she is a doctor and obviously her community is going to be made up of doctors as well. This person, Sarah, says, okay, I've been wondering if we do a giant campaign to inform men that their peens won't work in the future if they have diabetes or heart disease, we could change the world. And this person says, apparently there is a peen ring now that tells you your risk of heart disease. The peen is literally the window to the heart, though I think it is pretty late in finding atherosclerosis. This person says, literally, I feel this so deep in my soul in primary care and try to tell all the men. Okay, so this woman says, as a physical therapist, the amount of times I have rigged up something to support a very swollen scrotum on a rolling walker for a male with heart failure, this drawing 1,000% tracks. Heart failure and pain failure go hand in hand. Um, this person is a doctor as well. That elephant illustration was amazing. And I did my general surgery rotation in med school in upstate New York farming country. Can vouch that if a farmer is coming into the ER, something is crushed, cut off, or the patient is dying. This person says, this is exactly why marriage is associated with longer lives for men, but not for women. And keep in mind, this is on a doctor's page. This is not just the normal page. And then the, the doctor, the original doctor says, okay, but actually, and we're laughing, but it's such a good example of the additional emotional and mental labor that generally befalls women in relationships with men. This woman says, my cousin is a nurse in a rural farming area here in Michigan, and she always says that when an old farmer comes in and calmly says, something don't feel right, it immediately turns into an all hands on deck situation because he's likely two seconds from death and they're about to have the most intense medical intervention of the month. And then the original doctor says, I literally shivered reading this because it's like a one sentence horror story for a healthcare worker. And then the one that responds with one time a farmer came in and he said his um, he thought his wife was being overly worried and he'd taken time to feed his chickens and shower before he let his wife drag him in there. His appendix had ruptured. He politely asked if they could fix him up quick because he had work to get done that night. And they were like, question mark, question mark, question mark. She says, you're lucky to be alive. You're not going anywhere. 
a man joins in, urology here can confirm. So th this is literally what these medical professionals are saying. Someone in my comment section says, the Ministry of Health here in Jamaica said it's going to be up to us to encourage them to get their prostate checked. And I'm like, thanks for the comment. I, I go over to the Google machine and lo and behold, the article is right here. Minister calls on women to encourage men to screen for prostate cancer. In his message to mark Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, which is being observed during September, Dr. Tufton highlighted the fear and apprehension that most men have about prostate cancer screening and pointed out that women have the ability to positively influence men in this regard. I therefore call upon our women to help encourage us and to hold our hand even as we contemplate the screening and regular checkups that are essential. Dr. Tufton indicated that prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in Jamaican men and the leading cause of cancer-related deaths among the male population. The minister reasoned that everyone, especially sisters, I'm sorry, mothers, sisters, wives, and partners are anxious to change the current statistic and express confidence that the encouragement from women would make a difference. He stressed the importance of men getting over any fear or apprehension that they may have about cancer, prostate cancer screen. So I had shared some of that comment section from the doctor, and then I got more comments on my YouTube page. This woman says, then men will point, pull the, why didn't you remind me of said appointment? We can say, I did, and you told me to stop nagging you about it. This person, <laughs> she's not going for it. She said, tell that trick to put a reminder in his phone like a big boy and keep it pushed. And this woman says, yeah, when we are sick, they leave. They are six times more likely to leave than a woman is when her, her spouse is sick. Valencia said, before the separation, I quit making him appointments. First, I'm not wasting my time making appointments for him to cancel. And two, I don't want to hear about his pain. Grown AMF. If I am more worried about him than he is, I'm doing too much. And Ethereal says, the amount of labor that goes into coddling these men and Boondocks Dragon says, so what you're saying is we should step back a bit and let natural selection do its job. I'm 100% on board with this idea. Now, I did not say that. But what I will say is if these people are unmarried and having a hard time managing their own health, it is going to be very interesting watching what happens in the next decade, next two decades. Texan Beauty said, been in the medical field for 20 years. Most men, when you ask why they're, why they're here, nine times out of 10, they'll say, my wife made me come, or I don't know. In some instances, we're told to call the wife or he'll have the wife on the phone. If the wife is present, the man won't answer any questions about his health. She'll speak for them. And then um, Joy's last name says, two or three years ago, a woman on Twitter was venting about this. She was sick and tired of being her husband's mummy for years. They had been married a long time and she had to make his doctor's appointments, remind him the day of, make sure he takes his medication and follow the dietary recommendation or he just won't do it. She says she was stepping back and just worrying about herself and the kids. They were, there were legit people in the replies calling her selfish and a bad wife. The the thing about it is these most logical leaders, they they will jump in the comments, they will let us know that they built societies and they can run an oil rig and they can get on and fix a roof. They will let us know this. But worrying about their health and they've been in this body from the day that they were born, that's not something that they need to be tasked with doing. It's going to be very interesting watching the next generation because we're telling women to take a step back, focus on ourselves, focus on our own health, focus on our hobbies, building friendships, that kind of thing. It's going to be really interesting watching the next generation. Y'all jump in here. Let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.